We now at page 51 of the Teachings 2.0, Volume 3A. Section 2, Question and Answer Categories. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan answered the following questions submitted via Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube between May 2012 and March 2013. This set also includes many of the questions he received for the Hash Ask Farrakhan Town Hall that he gave his word that he would respond to. Religion and Spirituality Question, what is the meaning behind always saying Inshallah, and who exactly are we referring to? HML, F, we are told both in the Bible and in the Quran that we do not control a minute beyond the minute that we are in and we don't control fully the minute that we are in. So when we say, I'll see you tomorrow, we always say, Inshallah, or if it is the will of Allah, because tomorrow belongs to him, and I could leave where I am after saying that, and get into an accident and never see tomorrow. When we say, Inshallah, if it is the will of Allah, we're talking about him who has control over life and the creation, Allah God. So always, don't speak independent of God. Always speak like you acknowledge a power that has the next moment in his hand, and he may, out of his grace, allow us to see the next moment and fulfill any desired meeting that we say we would like to have. Just keep him in remembrance by saying, Inshallah. Question. I've been studying ancient Kemet, Egypt, and many of our ancient civilizations from the building of the pyramids. Do you think in studying and looking at our people that it shows that we did not recognize one creator, but we had many gods during that time period? Or am I incorrect, HMLF? Some of the ancient builders had other gods, but the one god started with us. And before there was a pyramid, we had civilizations. The pyramids were only built to leave a sign in the desert to a new ruler and a new world that was coming in, to remind them that before them we were. And the wisdom that we had, we left a sign of it, but we buried more of our ancient civilization under sand, under the forest, and under the water, some of which they're discovering now, and recognizing that there is nothing new under the sun, that we were here before. Great civilizations were here before, that this one does not equal. The one God was before all of this, and we ventured away from the one God. But I think it was Akhenaten who brought us back to the worship of one God. Question, why would God allow this present beast to modify the weather, thus at times controlling life and death, when this also can be a tool that confuses people from knowing the difference of whether it's Allah's chastisement, or is it the devil playing with the weather? HMLF, he is trying to show that he is equal with God, that is written of him. He studies to try to do what God does, but he can't do it like God does it. He can see the clouds and make a little rain. He can do little small things. But what we are experiencing in Hurricane Sandy's visit and Nor'easter Athena's visit and the tornadoes that are visiting is that it's not the enemy bringing destruction on himself. That is God visiting us with one calamity after another. He can do little things, but God is doing the big thing today, and he is in awe over what God is doing, because he doesn't understand why the change in the weather, or climate change, they call it. But who is producting the climate change? They say, well, it's the glaciers that are melting. Yes, but who is causing it? God is present, and he comes to end this world. Be on the right side of God. Question, why does Islam look at Christians and Jews as infidels? looking to remove us from life, did not we all share the root of Abraham, H, M, L, F? Muslims do not wish to kill Jews and Christians and remove them from life, that's propaganda. The Quran reads like this, those who are Christians, those who are Jews, those who are Sabians, those who believe in Allah and the last day, and are doers of good to others, there is no fear for them, nor shall they grieve. Christians, Jews, Muslims, all of us who are the children of Abraham, if we live what we have been taught by Moses, Jesus, and Mohammed, then we become a family again, 
and that is why the Jews await the Messiah and the Muslims await the Mahdi or the guide who is to come at the end of the world of the wicked. Paul said in Christ, There is no Jew, no Greek, no male, no female, no bond, no free, all become one in Christ. It is said the same in the Quran with Mohammed. He comes to unite the family of Abraham and bring that family into oneness, not kill the people of the book. That is not what he is here to do. Question, I love you, brother minister, and I wanted to know. What can I do with my life that would be pleasing to Allah the most? HMLF, submit your life to do His will. That would please Him most, because that is what He has called us to do, to be ourselves, which is a righteous Muslim. Question, what's more important? Us wearing a Muslim name as our first name and last name, or striving to live up to the attributes even if we have not been given a holy name? HMLF, it's most important that we strive to manifest the attributes of God in our life, for having a Muslim name and defiling it is taking the name of God in vain, and that will get us punished by God. So it's better to have an X and be striving to be a good person and manifest good qualities and characteristics in your life. Then, the good holy name will only be an honor to you for your having earned the right to wear the name of God. Question, Brother Minister, where does self-assurance come from? Is this a gift from air out of the sky? Or what should we do to gain it? H. M. L. F. Well, since the self did not come out of the sky, then self-assurance could not come from air. But you need air to assert yourself, so you're breathing. Self-assurance comes from confidence that you are able to do what it is that you desire to do of good in the way of God. What fighter goes into the ring not self-assured that he has the possibility of winning? That self-assurance of the fighter didn't come out of the air. It came out of his will to train hard and practice his skill and hone his skill. And the more he hones his skill and knocks his opponents out, with every knockout he gets more self-assurance. With every victory self-assurance. But be careful, because self can do nothing, you'll find greater without the God of self. So, if you think it is yourself, 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 and not yourself connected to the originator of self, then soon you'll run up against something that will humble you and make you know that it wasn't you at all. Question. What do you think has allowed the Muslim world in the East to become so weakened when challenging the enemies of the West? H. M. L. F. Because of deviation from the way of God and his prophet, Muhammad. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, If you follow this book, Quran, and my Sunnah or way, you will never deviate from this path. So if you see the Muslim world upset, it is not because of anything other than deviation from the straight path of God. And the only way for the world of Islam to get back to God is to examine the book again, the Quran, and the way of the Prophet, and conform to the book and the way, and they'll be coming back to the straight path of God. And that is why the Mahdi, or guide, was prophesied by Muhammad to come to guide that world back to itself. Question. Does the building and strengthening of one's faith in God come through trying God through the promises he has made in Scripture I, e, stepping out on faith in what you believe in doing, HMLF, one should step out on faith. But make sure that that faith is sound before you step out lest you begin to doubt God when you step out and fall. Peter stepped out. Jesus invited him out on the water, but he took his eye off the master and began to sink. You must be sure when you step out on faith that it's not arrogance, that it's not you trying to try God to see whether his word is correct before you try your faith to see if it is strong. When you're sure that you believe that God will help you, then step but on that faith, and he will help you and you will be successful. Question, why was it so necessary for Jesus to stay in the highways and in the byways instead of preaching in buildings? What was he trying to show us? I'm trying to become a better Christian. HMLF, because your work as a Christian pester is not in the church among the saved. 
It's in the highways and the byways among the unsaved. If we don't come out of the church, the mosque, and the synagogue into the streets that need the word, then soon you won't be able to stay in the church and be safe, because when you come out in the street, you'll meet what you failed to bring to Christ. Question. Why is it so vitally necessary to teach the people the Quran and the Holy Bible in the context of today's time, instead of looking at it like a history book like most preachers do? HMLF, as long as you look at it as a history book, you will never recognize that we are living in the time of fulfillment of prophecies. And you'll be looking at things and not recognizing what you're looking at because you're looking backward at history rather than forward to the fulfillment of prophecy. Question, what's the significance and importance of prayer for black people? It seems that many of us don't think it's important. HMLF, prayer is important because it helps you to connect with the source outside of yourself that can feed that source within yourself. The source outside of you is akin to the divinity that is within you. So by prayer, you connect with that source outside that feeds the source inside. Then, from the inside, comes the development of the kingdom of God. And that is why Jesus said, The kingdom of God is within you. Question, is God's ultimate way of destroying the rich to make them poor like us? HMLF, no. God is destroying their riches so you wouldn't be attracted by their riches to them. He is destroying their riches so that they have no more attracting power on you. And then the word of God can come to you, because it's God's desire to make you rich, but not rich in wickedness, rich in righteousness. Question, if God is the only one who truly knows the heart of an individual, then how can we train up ourselves to truly discern the spirit of one another? And how is spirit and heart connected to one another? HMLF, there was a song made popular by the Temptations called Smiling Faces Sometimes Tell Lies. You have to know the difference between acting good and being good. One of the things that no one can imitate is the spirit of God that is his gift. So when the scripture teaches, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit saith the Lord, then if you are attuned to God, you can discern the spirit. Question, what is the difference between giving charity and sacrificing? HMLF, charity is asked of us in these words from Allah God, spend out of what we have given you, spend how, in the cause of truth, that is charity. Sacrifice is bigger than charity, because even though you give out of what you have earned, you give a portion of that, but sacrificing means you have given more than what is expected or asked. Saul was given a command. Through the prophet Samuel to slay all of the enemies, don't take any prisoners, don't take any booty, destroy their cattle, their sheep, whatever they had, and he won the battle, but he disobeyed God. Lives were lost, but the men that had won thought, well, why can't we take some of the spoils of war? So when the prophet Samuel talked to him about his disobedience, Saul said, but the men made great sacrifice, and I didn't think there was anything wrong with their getting a little of the spoils of war. And Samuel answered, Obedience is better than sacrifice. Obedience is the highest form of sacrifice, because you are sacrificing your will to do the will of God, and that makes you very close to God. Question. In the scripture we're taught about blood being required at our hands of those whom we do not warn. I wanted to know, how much time must you spend with an individual to consider that their blood is off your hands after you've given them the word? HML, F, you can't give the word to someone who does not want it. You offer the word, in the word is warning. That person that rejects the word has rejected the warning that's in the word their blood is on their hands, not on yours. The meaning of that scripture is it's your failure to offer them what has been offered to you that changed your life. You don't have to stay with a person forever to know that their blood is not on your hand. After you give them the word and they acknowledge that it's off of you.
Assalamu alaikum. We are now at page 71 of the Teachings 2.0, Twitter Sayings of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, compiled by Abdul Qiyam Muhammad. Health and Wellness. Question. Do you have a cookbook for us non-members of the Nation of Islam that we can use? I think it's time for me to get on a one-a-day meal plan. HMLF, yes, there are cookbooks that are mentioned in the Final Call newspaper, and we have a cookbook from the table of the minister. Question, was the original man created with a reactive mind, or was it something that developed over time? HMLF, all of our minds are reactive, because we are here to react to the stimulus of what is in our environment. That's how we grow, by reacting positively to the stimulus of truth that God has put in his creation for us to study. But a reactive mind, in another sense, is, if you are not reacting to the stimulus of God, then you react to the environment that is less than God that is making you into itself. So God reacted, listen to his words. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And he said, Ah, this is good. He reacted to what he did, and because he reacted to what he did, and said it was good, he wanted to do more good. So it's not bad having a reactive mind, but it's more so. What are you reacting to? Question. Why do you and the Nation of Islam talk so much about the navy bean bean pie, bean soup, bean chips? What is the bean craze all about? HMLF, Master Fard Muhammad gave us the navy bean as a source of complete nutrition. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us that with the navy bean alone, feeding it in its pureed state to babies at a certain stage, they would live off of that 150 years. He said the navy bean, good pure milk and whole wheat bread you could live from 150 to 140 years. The presence of Elijah Muhammad and the God who taught him is to give us abundant life. I read recently that the navy bean has properties that ward off the effects of radiation and we're living in a world where everybody is being affected by radiation. Either in the medical field when you go for an X-ray, an M, R, I, or C, A, T, scan, or you go to the microwave, you turn on your TV, or you have these phones to your ear and the computer. It's radiation. You have these radiation towers that spread radiation over areas, and you find that people closest to these towers are being affected with cancer. So learn about the bean and we'll make available the recipe of how to make the navy bean soup. And try it, and you will see that your health will improve if you stay away from the bad foods in fast food places and go back to the stove, the kitchen, and well-grown, organically grown food. Question. I've been reading you all's literature about pork and the pig, and I heard that you say that the purpose of it is for medicine, I wanted to know, sir, was it made here in America, or did the Caucasians bring the pig over here with them? HML, F, I'm not sure exactly where it was made, but since a grafted human being was placed on our planet, they had to put something here that would act as medicine for the various diseases that might come from the new man. Question, dear minister, my mother is in such bad health but she won't let go of her bitterness which I think is contributing to her bad health. How can I gingerly advise her to just let go? HML, F. The state of mind of bitterness will definitely increase disease or illness in the body. That is an agitated state of mind that has lost the greatest gift of all, which is peace and contentment of mind. When we cannot understand the things that happen to us in life, and we have become embittered rather than emboldened to stay on the path of God, then that bitterness, like a poison like cancer, will eat us up on the inside. Question, according to you all's dietary law, are sunflower seeds and pumpkin seeds okay to eat, or are they bad for our bodies? HMLF, I just had a few sunflower seeds, 
and I love pumpkin seeds. No, they are fine. If you don't have diverticulitis, they are digestible. Question. What does it do to the mind when you feel that all you have is still never enough? H. M. L. F. Well, all that you have is never enough, and that is why Jesus said, I can of myself do nothing, but whatsoever the Father bids me to do, that I do. All of us need the help of God to accomplish the great things in life that we desire to do. So, no, you will never be enough to yourself, and that's why we always say Bismillah Iraman Irahim, in the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, and we always seek His help and His guidance. And His help assures us victory. Question, I am a survivor of prostate cancer, and I wanted to know how can I send money to support the Louis Farrakhan Prostate Cancer Foundation that you started and created. H.M.L.F. Please send your donation to 4855 South Woodlawn Avenue, Chicago, Illinois, 60615. Question. I have realized that my family eats too much fast food. How can I wean us off of this and get back to eating right? HML F. Well, I hope you're a good cook, because if you cook one of those great meals that How to Eat to Live guides you to, they won't want to eat fast food if you give them real, good food to eat. I hope that you will become a great cook and get the recipes of the Nation of Islam. And I guarantee you'll gradually break your family away from fast food. Question. How do you keep so at peace even in the midst of so much chaos that may be going on around you? HMLF. Peace and contentment of mind is the gift of God to those who surrender to do His will. No matter what the trial or tribulation, what success or failure comes, the peace of God causes us to go through all that life brings to us and come out of it wiser, stronger, better, and a greater servant of God and the people. Question. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that being a vegetarian is the best diet, but can we truly be vegetarians eating from other people's food and from their other people's farms. HML, F, yes, you can be a vegetarian eating from other people's farms, as long as you know that the food that they are producing is organic, or without poisons added to it. Yes, you can. But you should be pooling your resources so that we can own as much land as we can to produce the food that we eat. Then we'll never have to worry about being a vegetarian because all the food and fruits and vegetables that you eat will be that which you have grown. Question. After overcoming your bout with prostate cancer, what have you been doing in terms of educating other men about it so they may avoid that which you had to go through? H. M. L. F. All I can do is tell them of my experience by availing myself of opportunities to share with them my experience. The only thing that I would encourage black men to do is to start getting that examination for prostate cancer when they are at that age where it might strike them. Question, when you first joined the nation, how difficult was it for you to go to one meal a day? HML, F, it was not difficult at all once I made up my mind to follow the dietary teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. You might think it will be difficult, but once you make up your mind to do something, it is your mind that controls your stomach. You can do it if you will. Question, how do you effectively handle people who come into your atmosphere with foul spirits? How do you conquer them? HMLF, there are two ways. The Quran says when you meet people like that you walk by nobly and say peace. The second thing is you never let a foul spirit cause your spirit to become foul. It is not what goes in that defiles the man, but what comes out. Question. I am constantly being bombarded internally with unwanted thoughts. How do I conquer this? Because it's very frustrating when you're trying to be right. HMLF. We live in a world where we will be constantly bombarded by thoughts. What you see, hear, smell, taste and feel produces thought. 
And if what you see is what the enemy produces, if what you hear is that which the enemy produces, then your thoughts are going to be always on that. So focus your mind on the things that God produces. Take time and go in a quiet place where there are trees and bushes and flowers and life that only God creates. Then your thoughts will be on a higher level, on a higher plane. You will develop the power to fight evil thoughts through prayer and fasting. May God bless you. Question. I just read how to eat to live for the first time based upon one of your tweets, and I wanted to know is it true, as Elijah said, that we worship our appetites as though it was God, and does that mean just eating? HMLF, well, if you cannot control your appetite, and it has power over you, then you have made your appetite a God beside God. Could this be the reason why so many of us are obese, overweight, and sick? We can control our appetite if we follow what is written in How to Eat to Live, and not only the appetite for food, but the appetite for all of the things that the flesh calls for. It demands the discipline of control.